Yo, Elliot, I hope you're doing well. My name is Arthur, I'm 25 and I'm a car mechanic. Since young, I have passion for cars and always look for ways to become a professional in this area. I graduated in automotive technology and currently I've achieved a good place to work with expensive cars. However, I feel stuck. I feel like I can't go further than where I am because of the limitations of the job. It's not a thing where, it's not a thing you have to stop and think. It's a manual, it's manual work and there's nothing more than repairing cars. And I started to question myself if this is really what I want to do for the rest of my life. However, I can't imagine the other things to do to earn money. And I feel lost because I see the limitations of my work and I don't know any other path to start. Perhaps the lack of interest in other areas. I do have to keep investing in an area. Do I have to keep investing in an area that I'm working knowing my limitations or it's fair to try something new, not knowing where to start? So I, I gained a lot of wisdom from my father, who's also a car mechanic. My dad's 71 years old. My dad has been working as fixing cars since he was 20 years old. So that's 50 years of fixing cars, doing the same thing every day. And I have never once heard my dad complain. I'm not comparing you to my dad, but I want to share a little bit of the wisdom I gained from him. Uh, and where I had some wrong thinking in my life that I had to correct, that it took me some time to, to realize, uh, even though my dad was telling me I was wrong in my thoughts. So the very first thing I want to address is this lie, this, this, this fake idea that we've been fed in our culture. First of all, our culture is all about YOLO. It's all about effeminacy. It's all about pleasure, materialism, do you, pleasure yourself, emotionalism, feelings, passion, totally, totally caught by the, the gynocentric bug. We think, act, and behave like women. And I'm there with you. I just want to put it that way, right? We've fallen for this ploy, this trick to turn us into feeling creatures, right? Or now it's like, uh, you know, they, they, they force boys to cry at school, right? And, and the, you're shamed if you're not an emotional little boy, right? It's like, man, right, you're not, you should be feeling, don't listen to that, um, or, or don't believe in, you know, uh, traditional masculinity where, you know, where men just shut up and do what they have to do. Well, that's, that sounds good, especially if you're a mama's boy and like we do, we live in a world where we're taught to think like women, but it's not very manly at all. My father's path is the manly path. My father's path is the righteous path. My father's path is the, is the righteous sacrificial path for a man. And that is do what you have to do every day, whether you feel like it or not. Chop wood, carry water, and life will unfold perfectly for you. I didn't get that. I didn't understand that. When I was younger, I rejected that. But I watch my dad now and I watch how magically his life unfolded by just doing what he has to do every single day because that's what he was meant to do. You, there's, there's so many indicators that you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. Number one, you say you always had a passion for cars. So in fact, you're already fulfilling the passion thing. You say you always look for ways to be a professional in that area. You're 25 years old. That means most of your life you've done this. You graduated in automotive, automotive technology. You achieved a good place to work with expensive cars. The reason why you feel stuck is because you're looking outside yourself and being dazzled by shiny objects. You see other people doing other things, getting other things, going other places, and you wonder why you not too. This is the scourge of social media. This is the scourge of the internet. This is the scourge of having too much access to too many ideas and too many people to distract you. Part of the reason why I think my dad was so successful is because he doesn't have any distractions. My dad goes to work and he comes home. And then you know what he does when he comes home? He raises his family and he did extra work. I remember him working in the garage, taking extra jobs. If he wasn't doing that, what was he doing? He was fixing the house, painting the house, burying things, burying uh, plants. My dad loves trees, burying trees all over the yard. He'd go to work, chop wood, carry water, bring home cash, and then, do the, and then live the rest of his life. I think you're in a better place than my dad was physically, right? But emotionally, much less. Emotionally, my dad had it all together because he realized, look, 
it's just my job. It's just my job. I don't, don't make anything more of it than it is and don't denigrate it. Instead, be grateful. He says, I started to question myself. Is this really what I want to do for the rest of my life? Don't think about the rest of your life. Why are you thinking about the rest of your life? You've spent the past 25 years. Let me, let me, let me put this in terms of the clock. For the, past, for the first 12 years, the, the soil was being set for the second 12 years. From age 12 to 24, everything that you did and you assert got you to where you are right now. This is that all that was you preparing for the next phase of your life. Don't think about what you're going to do forever. Think about what you're going to do with the tools that you've been given for this new phase in your life. You're going into a third season of your life, the next 12 years, between 24 and 36. You've been given your tools. You've been given your place. You've been given the skills. You've been given your fully prepared and totally armed to dominate what you've got right now, but you're getting ADD again, just like we all do. You're getting ADD. You're starting to think. Stop thinking. Stop thinking. Don't think. Just do, right? This is, this is right action. Remember when I talk about the difference between activity and action? Right action is doing what's in front of you. Activity is Hmm, I wish I was doing something else. Maybe I should be doing something else. That guy's doing something else over there. Let me think about it. Let me feel about it. Let me be upset about it. Let me create some sort of upheaval. Let me change something in my life. Let me start disdaining what I have and not being grateful. All that is activity that's born of your fallen nature and the demons that seek to derail you. You're falling for their plot. You're falling for their trick. They want you to be miserable. Right action is, oh, this is what I got. Let me do what I have. Let me be grateful for the fact that I work. Let me be grateful for the fact that it's a means to an end and that I ha have resources. Let me be grateful for the fact that I was trained in this. I was passionate about this. I'm given the tools for this. I'm given an opportunity about this. You just got here. You just got here. Even if you were working for five years, right? It sounds like you just graduated right? Maybe three years, two years. It doesn't matter. You just began and you're already disdaining it. Love what you have. Don't get distracted. I've done this before in my life, guys. And that's why I'm warning you against it. I've, I've destroyed things in my life because of this very sentiment. And the thing is, I said this last week, the grass isn't greener on the other side. Listen, this is so funny. It's like I'm repeating myself from last year. He goes on to say, he says, he complains a little bit. He says, it's not a thing where you have to stop and think. It's manual work and there's nothing more to it than repairing cars. So essentially you're complaining because it's not complicated. It's too easy. Let me tell you something about my perverted thoughts and my wrong thinking and the ways I've destroyed parts of my life by thinking that way. I used to think it would be better. I used, to, I used to disdain the fact that I was an entrepreneur. Why? Because I always have to think. I always have to worry. I always got to come up with something new. I always got to be on point. I always got to be projecting. I always got to have responsibility. I always have to be the authority. I always, all these things I have to do. You know what would be really nice? Punching a clock, going to work, and then going home. That sounds real nice sometimes, right? I've said that to my wife sometimes. I said, you know, I don't say it so much anymore because I've grown out of looking on the other, uh, you know, to the other grass. I don't do that anymore. I'm grateful for what I have. And when I started to disdain, when I start to disdain what I have and don't think I never disdain what I have, I do. Then I stop and I say, whoa, who, what is this? That's dumb. Shut your brain off and keep doing what you're doing. It's just my fate. This is my fate. This is what I... Did I create this? My ego tells me yes, but my heart tells me no, right? The fact is that it's by the grace of God. By the grace of God, there go I. Everything I have is by the grace of God. I didn't make YouTube. I didn't decide to come here when YouTube came out. I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't grow up thinking I'm going to be a YouTube celebrity, right? YouTube influencer. Keep getting blurry, 
right? None of that, none of that is real. None of that happened. It was by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God that you got where you are as well. Be grateful, right? Um, be grateful for what you're complaining about. You say, oh, it's manual work and there's nothing more than repairing cars. Like I said, for 50 years, that's what my dad did. But here's the thing, and this is what I would offer you as well. My dad doesn't just fix cars for 50 years. My dad is the best at fixing cars wherever he goes. He's been, he's worked at multiple shops, usually because he quits, because you know, my dad's kind of like us too. I, my dad is like, my dad's a 70 year old version of me. And I'm like, I'm a 40 year old version of a lot of you. And we're, you know, we kind of have that in us. So my dad will quit jobs because he gets in fights with the boss and stuff. And, you know, just various things. My dad's a crazy dude too. But no matter where he goes, he's the best. That's why nobody fires him. <laughs> he never gets fired. He usually leaves because he makes the most money because he works the fastest and the most complete. And he's also most arrogant. He has high expectations for what they should provide him with so he can get his job done. Like, for example, he won't use the computers. My dad's like, I ain't no damn computers. I've been doing this for 50 years. I don't have no computers. So, so they, they get someone to be his assistant to do the computers so that my dad can do his job because he does it so damn well. Rather than, fo rather than thinking about doing something else, focus on being the best at what you do. You say no, but you said there's nothing more than repairing cars, but do you ever make mistakes? Are you, could you do it faster? Could you do it more effectively? Could you, could you put more love? Could you put more care into repairing the cars, right? Could you, this is something my dad said to me uh, the other day, he was here and he, he was talking about his boss. <laughs> my dad's so funny. I got to get him on these shows sometimes. I got to get my dad on making videos. He's like, my, he was complaining. This is what my dad complained about. So he yeah, the boss invites me into office. He wants to give me money. So what are you giving this money for? This is not my money. What are you giving this money? So my dad's like upset because this guy's giving money. So whenever somebody gives him a gift, my dad, uh, he thinks it's, it's a formal manipulation. <laughs> Where am I going with this story? I forget. Um, Anyway, the bottom line, the bottom line is uh, to be grateful for what you have. I think the bottom line with the story was that the guy was trying to trying to like, um, oh, here it was here it is. He was trying to like my dad thinks manipulate in a way he's right he was like uh, by giving him a bonus money. And my dad was like, no, take that money and put it into the shop. He said, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I've been telling you to paint the shop for the past year. Nobody did it. I've been telling you to get more lights in here. Nobody did it. You want to give me $300? You keep it and do, it, do what I've been telling you to do with it. That was my dad's attitude about it. But then he went on to say, this guy doesn't realize, this is my dad. He says, this guy, my boss doesn't realize I'm not working for him. I'm not working for that money. I'm working for the customer. You got to understand that I'm doing what I have to do in order to provide a great service for the customer. This is my dad's mindset. It's like, I, don't, I could care less about the boss. I care less about what they do. As long as I get pay, you know, paid for doing what I'm doing, don't give me any extra because I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for my customers. So it, what you can work on if you're bored, right? Because it sounds like you're bored and you want something to wrestle with. Wrestle with your own perspective on what's going on here. Because I get that too. I get ADD. I'm like, uh, I kind of tap this out. This is kind of getting boring. Let me go find some. But rather than that, come at it from a different perspective, come at it from a different angle, see it differently. In fact, I say, see it for what it really is, right? Which in a lot of ways is just a means to an end. Don't be so attached to your job. Don't be so in love with what you do. Realize that it's okay. It's okay that it's a means to an end. There's nothing, it's not ignoble, right? <laughs> It's not ignoble to take a job because you need a job and you just do the job and go home. There's nothing ignoble about that. It's your attitude towards it. If you have a job and you disdain it, well, then you're, you're perpetuating sin in your life. But even if you sweep the, sweep the, uh, sweep the streets, <laughs> sweep the streets and you have a good, good attitude about it, uh, you are your work is elevated to the station of worship. You're doing good things. I see, he says, I feel lost because I see the limitations of my work and I don't, want, I don't know another path to start. 
see the limitations, but don't be hypnotized by them. Don't worry about starting another path. I hope that you hear this and it releases a burden from off your shoulders. That's really what I think. I think you're carrying a burden that is an irrational, unnecessary burden. Stop it all together. Turn your brain off and just do what's in front of you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.